All right, y'all, welcome back. Triazine Racing, I'm Ryan as usual. Um, coming at you with another racing video. But this time, we're not racing the super truck. Yes, it's finally that time. I counted, it's been 123 Triazine Racing videos since the last and the only time we ever raced the hobby stock, now known as Double Trouble. There she is. Now, before I get in there and kind of give a recap of what we did last night and what I'm doing today and what I'm about to do, tomorrow to get it on the track. Um, just figured I'd give a little recap of what the hobby stock was and my, I guess, initial goals of the car when I bought it four years ago. Um, so four years ago, it was 2020. Um, back then I had the full crew of Eric, Dalton, and Chimney, also known as Chris. Um, and we pretty much busted butt every Thursday and almost every Saturday on the car uh, racing here and there wherever it was and just working in the shop getting the super truck ready to go and at that point in my time um, I was really happy and I was really grateful and I wanted to kind of pay them back a little bit and also kind of get other people involved in my life in racing um, because racing is my drug and you know they say that misery loves company so people that do drugs want other people to do drugs with them right well it's not really a negative this in this case of racing but this is my way i want to get people more involved um and kind of show people how much fun it is the race and just to get on the track you know um it's one thing to go fast whether you're going 60 miles an hour in the hobby stock or 100 miles an hour in the super truck just getting on the track and being underneath the lights and seeing everybody in the grandstands it's an awesome feeling and uh you know i loved it so much i just wanted to get other people um the chance to kind of feel that as well uh, put people in the seats and stuff and Obviously, over the years, um, things haven't worked out the way you plan. Um, obviously, I lost most of the pit crew guys there, and uh, I thought this was going to get done a whole lot faster and a whole lot more half-assed um, than it has gone. But it's finally time. It took four years. The car is back together. Um, going to let Eric drive it tomorrow. He's the first person to drive it. He'll be the second person to drive it with the new remodel of everything. But um, I really thought that we we're just gonna slam this thing back together and these guys would get on the track and if they wanted to take it for the weekend and I was away, it was their car to do so with, right? Um, but we spent a lot of time on it. Me and Eric, you know, we did everything pretty much from the ground up on it the right way. Um, it was a mess when we got it and uh, I'm pretty proud of the motor I built for it. Um, I think it's gonna be a good runner. And uh, you know, I just need to get this thing done for my life to get more organized because it was just sitting body panels everywhere and it was just kind of a, a thorn in my side so i'm glad this is finally over with um as far as the project end of it didn't really go like i was hoping to go but you know i gotta get done so i just started cracking on it recently a lot um and uh she's pretty much done let me show you kind of what we did last night on it um thirsty thursday didn't film obviously but livia painted the nose black you guys saw me paint the hood the roof and the upper decking um the last video still have not painted the red yet on it they'll have to be another time another uh another track day or whatever um but i got the body panels on livia painted all the decking panels back here as well it's looking really good um eric installed let me see if i get this light on the fleming family racing light eric installed all this plastic in here for the wheel wells this stuff right here is awesome at deflecting mud it just hits it and it drops down so he did that on both sides um on the rear uh, i still gotta put the spoiler on and i got a lot of work to do today guys a lot of work and i've been doing a lot of work early this morning but um i gotta do the plastic in here too because it's just really 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 helpful when you're scraping mud got to secure this nose a little better yeah i know it looks like garbage but i'm not really worried about the way it looks right now i just want to get it on the track um get the motor broken in get the gear that i built for it broken in um tranny also i just want to make sure that it's got a good good bones you know i want to make sure that we're not really missing anything major uh, mechanical wise and we'll kind of worry about the body making it look a little prettier next prettier next time um, but i still got a lot of braces and stuff to do here to make this sturdy today uh, I'll probably be busting butt all the way until I get to the track tomorrow on it. Um, but it's coming together. And uh, barring any major mechanical issues, this thing will be on the track tomorrow. And I'm going to cut the video right now and just keep on working on it and grinding. And I'll probably see you guys at the track. 
So thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for seeing the first episode of Double Trouble officially. I'll be riding shotgun. Um, and uh, yeah, just want to thank you guys for tuning in. I did sell a shirt. It was my first, uh, my first shirt sale in like, I don't know, four months. Sold it to a guy named Ryan Zinda, who also races a truck out in Arizona. So Ryan, thank you. If you guys want shirts, I still got some left. I got the big boy sizes. I just don't think I have any mediums. Um, but if you guys want a shirt, check out the description of this video. You'll see how to get one. Um, it's got the super truck on it um, and they're orange. So you'll see them a mile away. Also, um, I'm gonna try to link the video of the first time we had the hobby stock out in the video description also. And you guys can go ahead and watch that too if you wanna get a little more recap of how this thing started life when we bought it and it's short life it did have. Okie dokie. We are out here racing. By the grace of God, we got here. <laughs>
had a weird misfire here and there. And I, I heard never... those pops, but it didn't feel like a hard mix. Those pops are because of the exhaust leak, but it's got a weird, like, little hiccup every now and then. And it's just weird. And I think it was that that module that backed it up and it finally said no more. That's racing. <laughs> but you just turned the camera up, people. <laughs> <laughs> Right, guys I gotta apologize for not doing a good job of filming out the track but what a freaking disappointment um, here's I'm gonna recap a little bit of what happened um, went out for hot laps cars misfiring a little bit Eric said he put his foot in it and it just died so got pushed back to the stall uh, once we we're back in our pits uh, I tried to refire it it fired right back up so at that point I was like I think it's a spark problem um, so I went ahead and I put my uh, timing light and I put the uh, the clamp on every single spark plug wire and I was getting sparked to every single cylinder all eight cylinders are hitting and it's sitting there idling and I pull off the t timing light on the last spark plug wire and then right then and there it just died and then crank 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 put this uh, timing light back on it no spark at all so I'm like all right it finally died now I can actually figure out what the hell's going on with it so um, I tested, I had a good 12 volts going into the distributor. I tested, I had a good ground on the distributor. So I'm like, oh man, it's probably that HEI module that goes out quite a bit. And I didn't have one there. And so I was like, all right, I'll run home. I got a couple spare distributors that are not complete, but complete enough so I can rob some parts off it. And so me and my dad left. Um, I told Eric to pull it out, um, thinking that he'd pull out the module and I could be able to pull out the module on the distributor on the way back home and I just plug it right back in and we'll see if that was a problem. A little miscommunication, he pulled the whole distributor out. <laughs> um, but it didn't matter because there was plenty of time once we got back to the track to put the distributor back in that TDC and get it close enough so it would fire up if it was all right. But got back, put the module in it, still no spark at all. I'm like, damn. Okay, let's try a cap and rotor with um, not the road, just the cap and, uh, and the coil, sorry. Because HEIs have it all in one contained unit, coil and cap combo. And so I knew for sure that the module I had that was spare was good and the coil I had was good. So I put the new coil on there, still no spark. And I'm like, dang it, it's probably gotta be that magnetic pickup in the bottom of the distributor, which is really kind of hard to change at the track because you gotta pull the distributor back out, pop the shaft out, pop the roll pin out of the distributor gear. Um, long story short, it's a lot easier just to replace the distributor itself 
and the only distributor I had that was complete had a chewed up distributor gear on it. And I did not want to put that in the motor, our brand new motor and potentially ruin our, ruin our camshaft gear. So that was basically where I called it a night. And I said, all right, something weird's going on. We'll just figure it out later. We're running really short on time at that point. The main event was coming up. So we said, all right, load it up. So long story short, I took all this stuff to work and I bench tested it all. And guess what? Every single part I have here works just fine. Can you believe that? I go ahead and I put 12 volts off of a battery pack to the distributor. I ground the body of it. I put a spark plug in here and then ground the other end of the spark plug to the battery. And then I put this guy over the spark plug wire and you rotate this baby and she got spark for days. Guess what? That one has spark for days too. That one has spark for days. All the caps, all the modules, all the pickups inside, they all work. So something weird is going on. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I'm going to go ahead and put this guy back in it and see what I can figure out. Holy smokes. All right, guys, you are not going to believe what fixed it. Holy smokes. Totally my fault. 100% my fault on this one. Um, but she's back running, got all the spark I need out of her. And I'm not gonna tell you guys in this video what it is, but I'm gonna tell you what I did to make it run. I disconnected two wires. Now, drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys think those two wires were going to. But after I disconnected those two wires, fired right up, had all the spark in the world. Crazy. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for watching Trezzy and Racing. I'm sorry, it was a very event, uneventful first night out with Double Trouble, but we're gonna have her back and running in no time. Um, and yeah, you guys remember, if it's bent, it definitely ain't broken. Let me know what you think. Why are you recording our history talks over? He broke the car. He's talking back. <laughs> yeah, so I just... He broke it. <laughs> so y'all know. I just talked the distributor into breaking less than one lap in the green flag hot laps. <laughs> oh, that damn distributor. We changed the coil. We changed the freaking module. No spark. Still. No spark. <laughs> Definitely my fault. <laughs> 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 <laughs>